can be ordained. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for watching another one of these. Um, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about why do churches ordain people for ministry? We did this last week and uh, why does this happen? What do you need people to be ordained for ministry for and what does it mean? So I want to read something to you. This is out of uh, Acts chapter 1 um, and it says, um, it, Peter said, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. Now he's talking about Judas and they're going to replace his spot of leadership. It says, therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time. The Lord Jesus was living among us. Beginning from the time of John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of the resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas and also Matthias. And then they prayed and the Lord knowing everyone's heart showed us that it was Matthias is who they chose. So they, the lot fell on Matthias. Now, um, they needed to choose a person for ministry that had been with them the whole time and had been a witness of the power of Jesus Christ and his ministry uh, in that whole area of time. So when we ordain a person, what we're doing is we're looking at an area of ministry that needs someone to oversee it that has been with us those who are leaders in the church, has been with us, the church, and is also a witness of the power of God in our lives and what God is doing in the church. So there's an area of ministry that needs someone or a couple to oversee that area. The Lord shows us who it is, and we say, okay, Lord, we're going to, at a point in time, put these people in a place of ordained ministry with a mantle of the prophetic coming on them and empowered by the ministry itself and by God to take over and handle that area of ministry and oversee it. And that is so that those people are able to help all of us grow and for the church to grow as God grows the church. Now, we equip people for this and we're looking for somebody who is um, kind of, before we ordain people in that, we they take the ministry up and they see, can they handle it? Will it prosper? And is it working? If those things are happening and God really reveals it to us like this is, these are them for that, then ordination comes next. When the ordination comes, that's us saying, we believe in you, we know who you are, and we are here to have your back, and we want to release the empowering of the Holy Spirit, just like he's done on us, on you, for that particular ministry to thrive and function the way it should. And so um, we, we see that in people all the time. And God shows us what to do, not just me. He shows all of the leaders in the church. I talk with them. We talk together. We see what God's doing. I have meetings with those that we ordained beforehand. They know what my expectations are and what they're supposed to do. And then we go ahead and we release them into that ministry uh, to function in it. And all of us, we work together as a team, you know, and so as a collective team, we keep each other accountable and we keep each other uh, honest. We keep each other steady and backed up together. So that's what ordination is for. It's really to, to, to release people into their gift and calling that the Lord has already revealed to us they have. They take the area of ministry, it grows, others come in with them, and it's an awesome thing. So in case you were wondering, that's what we do, and we'll continue to do that down the road as we see others stepping into their gifts and calls. So I hope that helps, and we will see you on the next one.